everyone. Thank you for buying a stellar flute. I'm Erica Stewart, and this is my husband, Tom Stewart, our son, Matt, and our daughter, Lily. Collectively, we're known as stellar flutes. The music you just heard was played using just the five notes of the pentatonic scale, which is the scale that the Native American flute is designed to feature. Now, Tom is going to tell you a little bit about this DVD. We've set this DVD up so that if you want to watch certain parts again, you won't have to watch the whole thing. So you sure that's the one you like? Oh, yes, but I'm not sure I can play it quite like that yet. I Well, you, you probably <laughs> could, could play it pretty easily. I have a hard time turning my stereo on, Tom. Yeah. Can you at least get me started with the Yeah, the, the first thing you do is you look for the on button, and then you, 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 turn, <laughs> okay. you turn it. Okay. okay. So that's how you do your stereo. Here, you, you try to okay. play your flute. And you're going to have to show me how to hold okay. it and everything. Okay, first thing you do, tug on the leather. That's probably okay. already been tugged, but just... And you, and okay. sometimes if you hold it between your knees and the leather breaks, mm -hmm. you don't throw the flute across the floor. Okay, is the block just behind that hole? Yes, it is. And is, just it, is it centered left and right? Yes, it looks centered left and right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if you can cover all the holes. Three fingers on each hand, any way you do it that feels comfortable. Okay. Try not to arch your fingers. Okay. Flatten those fingers a little, out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And kind of wiggle a little bit to see if you can feel that you feel those holes under there, and mm -hmm. that you're really closing them. Okay, I feel now, the holes. Blow very gently. There's the note you're supposed to get. Okay, try lifting uh, the bottom finger off. Try the next finger. Now put it back down. This, this one here is leaking. I can see air. Oh, yeah. you got to be conscious of all yeah. of the fingers, don't you? Yeah, and I okay. still, it's still not covered. Oh. No, move it down, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, give it a blow. Woo! Now, watch what I do. And you do it, too, while you're watching me. Fundamental note is the hardest one. The, and this that's being what, the that's fundamental? called the fundamental note. It's the lowest note the flute will play. I can see you really have to be conscious yeah. of plugging there's those all, There's holes. so many fingers that you have yeah. to you have to really plug them. So you're, you're, it's blowing up uh, an octave. You'll get it, don't worry. It's it's a matter of, you're going to have to practice this for half an mm -hmm. hour, an hour, and you'll get so. Where do I leak? Okay, well, you've been, traditionally you've been leaking from that finger. It's a little bit too far north. It still is. Lower it a little bit. Now, there you go. That's the kind of thing, once you Boy, get the I felt, scale... I, I felt it there for one a yeah. minute, I had to... Can you feel the vibrations on uh -huh. your fingers too? Once you get the scale, you start to fool around with it. The notes will go together no matter how you play them, as long as it's these five notes. Notice I was playing something different than you were, but it sounded, <laughs> sounded yeah. pretty cool. And, and I got that basic note. Uh, mm -hmm. It was hard to get that basic note. The fundamental right. note, yeah. yeah or mm -hmm. fundamental note. Mm -hmm. Go 
ahead and just play play something. See, you're hitting the fundamental every time now. <laughs> but this is what you will need to practice when you go home. Yes. It's not as hard as you and thought. It, and it's it. hard to get your fingers coordinated. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Pretty soon but your, your fingers I'm... start to be the ones that are actually doing the work, and you're not actually thinking about them anymore. And right. That's, when you get to that point, you'll be able to... And to I really feel like in. I'm gripping it awful tight. Yeah, I, I, you won't have to do that either. Right. Okay. But you, you, right now you have to squeeze it to try to keep the coals closed, but... When you, when you cover a note down below, a note that's open, mm -hmm. that'll be that won't be part of the pentatonic. So that that'll be a legitimate note. But it'll, the pentatonic is the, is these five notes. Doop 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 doop. And this note is an octave above this note. Now, here's another thing you can try. Mm -hmm. uh, all holes closed, play the fundamental note, and then blow it a little harder and it'll jump up to the high note. There you go. That's the same note as this. So sometimes you might want to use that in your playing. That I've got the fundamental <laughs> note down almost. Yeah, I think I think, and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun. You're, you're well on your way. You definitely are. You know, <laughs> really, think, yeah, you're I not just saying that. No, yeah. well, oh, I am thanks. just saying that. But <laughs> well, but, thank I, but you. it's actually true. I know from experience that that if you'll stick with it, you'll be having all kinds of fun. We're good to go. Well, well thank you, Tom. Thank yeah. you very much. A few words about this amazing instrument. It has its origins in early Native American cultures. The indigenous people evolved this instrument through a series of changes. One theory has it that it happened about 200 years ago to a flute of a different nature in the Hopi culture in the Southwest. The instrument has worldwide popularity. We have sold Native American flutes on every continent except Antarctica. The reason for the popularity, in addition to the incredible voice of this flute, is that there are people all over the world that are intensely interested in Native American cultures. I want you to always remember the origins of this instrument. You'll get very used to playing it, and you might forget. But this is an Indian instrument, and we owe a debt of gratitude to the cultures that evolved it for us. I'd like to tell you a few things about how the instrument works. It'll be easier for you to understand if you, if you know that it has two chambers. And you can see that the air comes into this back chamber and then arises out of the top of the flute. When the block is attached, the slot in the block will shoot air over that front hole, and that creates a sound, wi sound wave inside the flute. The block is attached to the top of the flute with a piece of leather, and it has a slot in the bottom of it, and I hope you can get a view of that. That slot is very precisely milled, and it is the airway that shoots air across the top of the flute. This generates that sound wave, and you control the sound wave by fingering the flute.
you attach the block with a piece of leather. We usually wrap it around twice, pull it very snug, give it a little tie, and it's very important that it be tight. As Erica mentioned, the little piece that we were playing was in something called the pentatonic scale. Pentaton pentatonic scale consists of five notes that are very easy to play. This flute is designed to feature that scale. As you notice, I am leaving this hole covered and except for that I am removing the other fingers one at a time. The first note is called the fundamental note and that is the note that the, the flute is pitched in. fundamental notes the hardest note to play if you have a, a loose finger you get a note like that so you need to practice this scale a number of times maybe for a half an hour or for an hour or two The idea is that pretty soon your fingers will take over their jobs and you won't have to use your brain to run them. When you get to that point, it's a good idea to just do something that we generally call playing from your heart, which is to start playing the pentatonic notes in a different order. Any different order works. You can start out with something very simple. You can do a little tapping. Keep it simple at first. Something that'll bring you pleasure. You'll enjoy doing it. It'll, it'll work really well. And those notes go together in any combination. You can't go wrong. Another thing worth mentioning is that if you have another person that has a flute in the same key as yours, the two of you can be randomly playing notes in the pentatonic scale and it will always sound like it's intentional harmony. You can't, there's no combinations that don't work. This instrument is not limited to playing the pentatonic scale. It'll also play all the other scales. The familiar Do, Re, Mi scale uh, can be played. You notice that the first note that I played there was a half hole. That means that I partially uncovered that first hole. Half holes are a little tricky and every flute seems to have its own way of wanting to do it. You'll have to find out what your flute wants. You'll eventually want to get to the to the diatonic scale because that's a lot of fun too. But we strongly recommend that you stay with the pentatonic scale, 
playing from your heart is a lot of fun and it's a it's a wonderful way to introduce yourself to this instrument We're going to have a few words here about care and maintenance of the flute and also some troubleshooting if you run into problems. But we forgot to mention one important thing about the flute, and that's what key is your flute in. The key is what note you're playing when you're playing the fundamental note. And that key is written on the back of the flute, and you, it's along with the stellar signature and, and the date, you'll see what key your flute in is in. This one is F sharp. A big problem with flute playing can be watering up. You get condensation in the rear chamber of the flute and that's that's back in this section right here. Eventually that gets up into the block. Pretty soon your airway is not clean anymore or it's not clear. It's probably clean because that's just condensation in there. And this can be annoying, particularly if you just started playing your flute and all of a sudden it waters up. Good way to prevent watering up is to keep your flute warm. We've used heat lamps, setting it in front of a heater, putting it into a sunbeam somewhere that's shining in your window. Uh, even, even a heating pad would work. If the flute is body temperature, you'll never get condensation. You'll never have watering up. But if you do have watering up while you're playing, it's a good idea to take the block off of your flute and to, to kind of blow the water out of your flute and to, to dry it out. This is a simple procedure of just blowing it in each way. And that kind of shakes the water <laughs> out of your flute. It's a good idea if you're going to set your flute down to set it in this kind of a position so that the water will eventually just kind of run out and it'll be dry. Seriously, <laughs> you're not going to see that kind of water in your flute even on a bad day. But we thought it was good to mention. We thought you should see it at its worst. Another thing that could happen is that your flute could start to sound strange. You pick it up one day and you play it and it's not the same sweet flute you once knew. This could be a lot of things. 99% of the problems are because you forgot to notice that the block is out of position. The, the block, you know, can move sideways, up and down, and it can slip too far forward. If that happens, you'll see it right away and you just move the block back into position, voila, you're good. But sometimes the block is in the right place and everything seems fine, but you have a strange buzz or you have a, uh, a note that won't play. So you might want to take a look inside your flute. A good way to do that is to take the block off and position the flute so that there's a light shining in this, this hole and then you look down the barrel of the flute and the whole back side of the flute will be lit up from that light. It should be a bright one. And if there's something stuck in your flute, some fiber or something that's right in this, this little airway, and 99% of all the problems that you'll have will have something to do with this, this section of the flute, either the block or this. Uh, another way of looking inside your flute is to have a a light overhead and to try to hold the flute in such a way that you're looking down so you can just barely see that hole but you'll be able to actually if the light is right you'll be able to see the lid of that little indentation in the flute and there could be something caught in there that wouldn't show up with this method. Another thing to look at is the deck of the flute. Make sure, feel it with your finger, make sure there's not some kind of an edge or a burr or something there. You can usually feel an obstruction Sometimes something that you can't see, but you can feel 
can cause the, the sound of the flute to change for the worse. And the other thing to do is to examine the bottom of the block. There shouldn't be anything in there. It should just be a smooth section. You can feel it. It should feel smooth. No little burr on the edge. If none of these things provides improvement with your failed flute, we strongly recommend that you send it back to us and we will fix it and return it to you and if it's necessary we'll even replace it. Same goes for if you break your flute, you have a problem. Those are the things that, that we would like to help you with. If it's not something simple you can do yourself, let us do it. We're the pros and we'd be glad to fix the flute for you. A few words about care and maintenance. Essentially your flute doesn't need a whole lot of care and maintenance. It has four coats of polyurethane varnish inside and out of the flute. Uh, alcohol won't stain it and water really won't damage it unless it's allowed to be in a very humid place for a long period of time. I mean like outdoors. That doesn't mean you can't take it camping. It could survive any camping trip as long as you don't let it be out in the rain outside the tent at night. The flute comes with, with a, a really good warranty. If something goes wrong with it, you loses its voice, forms a crack, you break your bird, or you step on your flute, we'd like to be able to fix it for you, and you'll have to send it to us to do that, but there will be no charge. That's about it for care and maintenance. On behalf of all of us at Stellar, I want to thank you again for buying a Stellar flute. I hope you found this DVD interesting and informational, and I hope that you and your flute have many happy days together. Thank you.